if you feel like there's things bubbling to the surface that you're not sure where it's coming from, it's okay. And that can be scary to sit in this silence. People don't know really how to navigate through that. Yoga helps you do that. So welcome to the Tea on Live. My name is Jasmine Kyleen, and on the show, we like to sip tea and talk about things, preferably things that matter. Uh, and this particular segment is in collaboration with Well World TV, which is a modern TV network sharing educational and inspirational content. We're going to be going live every Sunday at noon on their Facebook page, so make sure to check them out. Today, I am here with the lovely Fern Con, which I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but I do just quickly before I want to say that I've already had such a connection with you. Going to your studio has provided such a safe space in my life, and I'm so excited to highlight what you do and have an authentic conversation. So without further ado, introduce <laughs> yourself, let the people know. Sure. Well, first of all, I am so honored and I adore you. I think you're amazing what you're doing and the reach to your audience. And I'm so proud of you. <laughs> My name is Fern Khan and I own Dancing Lion Studio in downtown Delray. And we are um, not only a yoga studio, but a true healing arts center. And um, that's really specific because not everybody is into the physical yoga practice, although I kind of wean them into it. <laughs> but we do have a lot of programming that help with our, I call the energetic, emotional, psychic, spiritual part of us. And a lot of people, when they hear spiritual, they you know, think of the woo of, the, of it all. But it's really getting in touch with your inner light you know, who you are, your heart's desire, um, things that you feel are emotional body. So it's not just the physical body, like people think of the poses, but everything pertaining to all of you. Absolutely. You know, we, we started last summer, so not even a year. And um, so we're just ramping up with all these beautiful programmings. And of course, we shut down in March. Um, but we are um, looking forward to opening again in a mindful way. We'll talk about that later. Absolutely. But what we do is we bring programming that um, all ages feel comfortable um, participating in, like Reiki circles. Uh, we have acupuncture with yin. We have ecstatic and journey dance. Um, programs around crystals, as well as your traditional vinyasa, yin restorative. Um, we've added programming on Zoom that we haven't done in the studio that actually I'm going to bring into the studio like yoga core with Pilates and yoga bar. Um, so, you know, um, that's, that's pretty much what we do. Um, we are, our goal is to bring the beautiful and rich eight limb path of yoga to the modern yogi. Mm. And what's nice is I own the studio with my daughter. Mm -hmm. who is also a fitness trainer, Tyla. Mm -hmm. And so we reach all ages, all audiences. Mm -hmm. We connect with different people. So everybody feels comfortable here. I'm actually in the studio. I try to come in here through this whole thing every day to broadcast because it's a beautiful space. It has great energy. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do is we, we bring the wisdom of the yoga path in a way that is attainable and achievable to everybody yes. whether you want to learn a little bit about meditation a lot of people kind of hear it they don't know what it is how do i meditate am i doing it right or wrong or things like reiki or kundalini what does that mean and we make it really approachable really approachable we have great teachers here so, um, oh, you've experienced uh, yeah, I, I mean, a lot of the goodness here. <laughs> yeah, and the instructors, I mean, aside from, from you and Tyla, the instructors that you brought in are just heaven sent. Yeah. Absolutely. It's an incredible yeah. space. And there's something for everybody. I think that's right. so important to know. There's something for everybody in terms of what you're seeking in your spiritual path, but also mm -hmm. just like what age you are. Exactly. You know I mean? It really doesn't, it doesn't matter. You'll find right. something of value in the studio for sure. 
But I, I stay young at heart anyway, but. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But, yeah. What we, we really want people to feel comfortable in whatever we offer here. Um, there's no judgment here. Mm, right. A lot of folks that we are meeting are new to yoga. So we really try to make a space that, you know, come as you are, you don't have to feel intimidated. Right. Um, the yoga teachers don't walk around in little skimpy outfits and, you know, make you feel like you have to look a certain way. Yeah. That's totally not who we are here. Yeah. Um, it really is a place that embraces, even the name of the studio has a particular, well, it has a few meanings. So in yoga, there's a pose dancing lion where you're on your hands and knees and you're moving favorite. in a very, I know. <laughs> You're moving in a very organic, liberating, personal way. So what we do is we ask you to just move in a way that feels good to you. And the studio really follows that philosophy is we want everybody to show up just the way they are. So yeah. that's, part, that's one of the reasons why we named this studio is like you come as you are into our door, into our space, and hopefully a little magic will happen. <laughs> absolutely and there's something so fierce about it you know what i mean you guys are absolutely women that we're, we're pretty fierce <laughs> exactly i mean it's like a lion's mane already so come on yeah. <laughs> so just a little bit about me um i started dancing at three years old mm -hmm. and uh always followed the path of health wellness mindfulness and movement and i was a so I'm a certified personal trainer and I taught aerobics and kickboxing and step aerobics and tap dancing and Pilates and bar. And then finally I came to yoga mm -hmm. and I fell in love with it. And I've taught yoga all over um, at expos and I became a 500 hour teacher. And in fact, now I'm actually in the middle of a yoga teacher training here at Dancing Lion that we started online. In fact, tonight we're gonna to have our second weekend about anatomy. And I plan on continuing to offer the teacher training, which if anybody in your audience is interested in the fall, we'll have another session going. Yeah. Um, and I really, I think it's really important to pass down the lineage, but in a way that is approachable. And we've got some really great teachers coming up the ranks here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really great totally. group. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people will be interested in that for sure. Um, I'm seeing yeah. more people really like fall in love with the art of yoga and you know why you get certified. So it's and it's life changing because yeah. we do a lot of deep inner work. Mm -hmm. Um I already see changes in this group of, of women that are studying with me. And, you know, you do learn the tools to be a teacher and they're all starting already. I get them right off the bat. <laughs> oh, awesome. Speaking the language and, and yeah. coming. So what's beautiful is yoga is now accessible in all populations. You can work with veterans. You can work with special populations. You can work with in recovery. We led a yoga for 12 step in our studio and I'm certified in that um yoga for children yeah. teenagers yeah. and i wanted to point that out a lot of us are going through this stressful time right now mm. and we look for things to cling on to to help us alleviate the stress and anxiety that we're going through yoga is a beautiful way and i don't mean getting into handstand or the fancy postures but mm. to sit on the mat yeah. and move the body and turn inward and this essence of being present mm. you know what that means to just be still mm -hmm. and know that you're okay in this moment mm -hmm. and then the next moment comes and you're okay in this moment and if you can prevent your mind from going down the path of the future you stay out of the anxiety right. if, if you stop ruminating about the past you come out of the depression Absolutely. So this present moment philosophy is really the essence of yoga, Absolutely. but also a beautiful tool for everyone. So they don't even know that they're practicing yoga. <laughs> right. If you take that word out of it, the essence of it will really help um, just get through these times. Um, and it's really, it's a really beautiful tool. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And I think a lot of our suffering comes from like existing in a fantasy future or in a suffering oh, sure. And and what the reality of it is, is that neither exists. You know, one is in, Bingo. Your, one is in your imagination. <laughs> Truthfully, we all we have is the present. And so one of the questions I was going to ask was just how movement and meditation has helped you find peace in this um, in this time. But I think you really just touched on the fact that it's allowed us to sort of strengthen our stillness and strengthen our ability to be here um yeah that's huge and that's something that anybody at any point in their lives at any age in any circumstance can really benefit from i would say and also the movement part i don't want to uh, negate that um not at all you know we we i like to say our issues live in our tissues yeah <laughs> and if you've ever felt like you had to go for a run Right. or um, you just had this pent up energy. And if you don't find a way to move that out of the body, it shows up in aches and pains mm -hmm. and headaches. And sure. a lot of our physical ailments are totally emotion related. Like oh, the littlest thing, you know, our knees hurt, our necks hurt. So especially like um, tonight, I'm teaching a candlelight yin class where, you know, we set the room dark, everybody sits and listens to music, and we just move the body in a way that allows us to let the energy move, allows your mind to get still enough to let the breath calm the nervous system, yes. because we're in our sympathetic nervous system, our flight, flight flight fright response yes yes so what we want to do is get out of that it's not healthy to stay in that and a lot of young people especially they're so glued to social media <laughs> comparing they're on instagram facebook oh well i'm guilty too i shouldn't say anything <laughs> <laughs> As the i will say but yeah everybody but yeah I, I really strongly recommend putting it down, especially with all the Zoom stuff. I teach a lot on Zoom. Like I find I need to step away, mm -hmm. take a breath. Uh, we could do something right now and yeah. I'll show you just how to um, one little breath, one little moment, just this feeling of groundedness changes everything the way you, you feel. Absolutely. So yeah. I can have you close your eyes and just notice the energy around you. If there's any sense or sounds. And then just notice how you feel internally. You're feeling anxious or calm. And then I invite you to take a deep breath in and feel the belly rise. And then open mouth, exhale. And then again, notice your inner world. Notice if you can feel your heart rate calming. Notice the muscles in your face, between your brow. And let's just take one more deep breath. And sigh it out. And then open your eyes. And you have to notice that a little shift just in the few seconds, and I always like to say a breath is a tool you have in your back pocket all the time. Oh. If we can just take a moment, like when we're getting frenetic or we're watching the news or people are coming at us or we just don't know, are they, or should we open? Should we wear a mask? Where should we go? What should we do when we're just in this? Ah. Yeah. Stop. Just take a breath. And that's that present moment mentality. And it works every time. <laughs> it really does. Time, especially like, I think so many people right now obviously are, are working from home and it's like just taking that second for yourself can have, you don't even realize the resistance. Like just now, I, I'm feeling very calm, but like I realized my jaw was tight and I was like, I didn't even exactly, realize. Exactly, exactly. Releasing it is, is huge. Mm -hmm. I think more people should take that as a tool. And, and that brings me to the next question, which is that sure. I think we have this, this knowledge that being present and dropping in can really do wonders for us. But I do feel like some people have a resistance towards it. And mm -hmm. I, I wonder, and I'm just curious to know if you have an, a theory as to why people are resistant, like just, I don't know, embracing stillness. I do. <laughs> me <too>. So... <laughs> Stillness is a scary place. Right. 
the, you know, um, turning inward takes bravery. And very often things can bubble up that maybe we kept suppressed. And it's good to be in a place where you have a professional yoga teacher or someone that can guide you so that you understand that that is totally normal. You know, you do hear a lot in yoga that, oh, you know, be the light and, you know, be happy and, you know, everything is love and light. And that's but, you know what? <laughs> that's not life, folks. No, no. <laughs> so my philosophy is, is that you really need to learn how to move through that shadow self. Yes. And understand that if you feel a little crummy one day, it's okay. If you feel like there's things bubbling to the surface that you're not sure where it's coming from, it's okay. And that can be scary to sit in this silence. People don't know really how to navigate through that. Yoga helps you do that. A qualified yoga teacher can help you do that to understand. Maybe it's that you just need to have a good cry. I mean, that's your soul energy just a release that is a natural release it's a beautiful thing i've had many people cry in my class and <laughs> and yeah um but the resistance is they're not re they're always you know you hear that you should always you know i, I don't want to say be happy but you know find joy in the moment and you, right. you get these mixed signals out there and some of us don't really know how to do the work to pause and understand where they're feeling is coming from. But the good news is that if those feelings arise, that feelings come and go. I always like to say, feelings are like visitors. We let them come and go. You don't make your guest house too comfortable. Exactly. <laughs> That's this, you know. Yes. You let them flow through you so that they don't stay in the body because then that's when your issues start coming. You get your headaches. The manifestations um, of it. Yep. Physical manifestations of it. Yeah. Movement is beautiful when we can just let the energy out of the body. It just feels so good. You don't have to be flexible to, to practice yoga. That's like oh. that weird thing that you hear. Um, you move, everybody in my class is perfect the way they are. However you show up is perfect the way you are. We all have different abilities. We have different structures of our body. Some of us, some poses I will never do, right? Mm -hmm. Just because of my anatomy. So what? That doesn't make me less of a yogi. <laughs> um, so getting back to your question is that... <laughs> There is this resistance. There's a resistance to meditation. People don't, um, they sit in stillness and they say, okay, am I meditating? Am I thinking? What am I right. thinking? Right. <laughs> they don't really have, know how to navigate that. I like to do guided meditations mm -hmm. so that you hear my voice and I bring you on a journey. And even though your mind may wander, I give you tools to bring it back. And mm -hmm. then it becomes what happens is you become aware that you can manage your own thoughts. Exactly. That is the big point. Okay. People think that our thoughts just happen, right? Most of our thoughts aren't even true, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> 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 but what happens is that once you start going down that rabbit hole of thinking that's not sustainable, that doesn't serve you well, you become the seer of your thoughts. You observe, you learn to say, well, that's not serving me. Right. So I look at the mind like a highway. So you're going down 95, right? You, you have this thought and like, no, that's not really working for me. That's not a good thought. You kind of veer off. You begin to learn where to veer off so that your mind, your body, your life, then the true self prevails. Okay. Then you can have a happy life. Then you can move forward with abundance. And it's just little tools, little tools. <laughs> oh my gosh, you just, you took every single syllable right out of my mouth. Um, I, I always, well, we think alike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I always yeah. say that the people who are committed to embarking on this journey of finding themselves in the stillness are some of the bravest because in actuality, so brave. it, isn't, 
easy to face your shadow, to face the things that you suppress, to really come face to face with your own mirror. And I think that is why there's a lot of resistance to it because it's work. Inner work is work. Absolutely. It's worth it. You will reap the benefits. And I absolutely, yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna, your shadow self is going to show up regardless. You know what I mean? So either do you want to show up in pains or in outbursts or in anger, or do you want to sort of observe it, let it move through you? Um, Because I mean, an emotion is, it's going to show up either way. So you just have to feel it and learn from it and heal it um, willingly and presently. So absolutely. To be brave enough to do it. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, you begin to, it is, we call it the path of enlightenment. And it doesn't mean like, you know, you just wake up and you're some guru. Ah, you know? <laughs> it's, it's enlightenment about uncovering your true nature. See, yeah. it's there. Yeah. It's there within us. Absolutely. Our experiences and the way we're raised, our childhood, then begin to cloud us. And, you know, we all have had trauma, you know, some of us big trauma, you know, some of us little trauma, but we all don't, we do not escape trauma. No, and the beautiful thing is that not only does it heal yourself, but then you begin to really learn about those around you. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's having a bad day and maybe is unkind to you, mm-hmm. instead of acting out defensively or, you know, getting angry, you can kind of step back and have compassion. Mm -hmm. And that is a beautiful thing. Like, wow, they must be really going through some pain today. And their reflection of that. And how can I reflect back to them feeling that I understand that? Yes. And if the world acted like that, (laughs) it would be amazing. (laughs) So it's not only a path of enlightenment for yourself, but then you really begin to understand other uh, people and the communication is better yeah. and um, strengthens you know, your just connection a, mm-hmm. sure yeah you become more of a sure friend. absolutely yeah and yeah. Just thank you for, for bringing that to light because I think yeah there's a lot of benefit <laughs> just facing your shadows honestly um, yeah and go ahead go ahead yeah we all we, like I said before we all have our, our shadow side and mm. You know, some of us have thoughts that maybe seem so out there, or maybe they're afraid to think that, but it can only serve you to bring it to the surface and deal with it and maybe be more of you. Exactly. You know, I, can, I always say that um, I lead what I call a wisdom board workshop. Um, it's like a vision board, but I call it a wisdom board. And I do a lot of self study exercises beforehand. And I always say to people, can you imagine if great artists like Mozart or Beethoven or Monet didn't create and didn't follow their true path and didn't do their shadow work and and didn't give us the gifts of who they were, um, how less the world would be. And if you do the shadow work and if you do find your true path in life, then you can express that and give that to the world. I mean, that's a beautiful thing to be able to do. And that's part of what yoga helps us do is that uncovering of our true nature. Um, So it's not just a downward dog. (laughs) I love a downward dog. A lot happens in a downward dog. (laughs) But um, part of my work, part of my work is um, this positive, I have a, um, a whole, other aspect of my business what I call firm formations. They're affirmations by me. Yes. Where I do I do a lot of work in positivity training and um, finding your true north and your purpose in life. In fact, I'm going to be doing a whole series on that right. um, where people can uh, come together and just do certain exercises to uncover their true gifts in life. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of people that you know, think they could play an instrument or always wanted to create or, but just have fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is the greatest dream killer. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the yoga path is to 
have right thinking to uncover your true nature and not live in fear. Absolutely. It took me, it took me a long time in my life. I mean, I'm a little older than you <laughs> to really understand, like, I need to stand in my purpose. Absolutely. And um, that's part of what we do here. Yeah. And it's a commitment. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not For something sure. that you, you master and, and you just, you know, have for, and, oh. and it's important to note that like, um, no path of any kind of healing is linear. You're going to have the days that feel like butterflies and rainbows and that's incredible, but you know, oh, the days yeah. that feel lower are they're meant to teach you and meant to serve you and, and above all else, allow you to be more grateful for when you do have those highs. You know what I mean? But you can't have highs unless you have the lows. Exactly. You wouldn't know the that is That is, um, you know, it, I, I posted something recently and it was something to the tune of, you know, in your, your greatest uh, conflict or challenge, you get to find out who your true hero is. And isn't it wonderful that you find out that it's you? It's you. Oh yeah. You know, um, yeah. and ultimately that is the case. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know a lot of people, they, they struggle with that and, and it's a real organic thing. And I, I am in tune with that, that it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. um, surround yourself with people who are uplifting. Absolutely. You know, know who your front row is, those who are going to be supportive and, you know, don't hesitate to reach out for help. That's yeah. really important especially now, um, yeah. as we come forward out of this, right. people will be struggling, you know, what is right? Is it safe? How can I do so? Um, none of your feelings are invalid yeah. and make sure that you express it to somebody and, um, know that you are supported. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, human connection is very healing as well. And yeah. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on was um, mm -hmm. the reality of it is, is that our society at times can find itself being divisive, um, especially within generations. I think there's a, a weird sort of like cultural war going on between like the older generation, the younger generation, as far as like viewpoints and stuff like that. And while there is a beautiful union in some ways um, and other ways, it, it feels like there's a constant war going on. And I personally think that like our yoga practice and spiritual journeys, it's a beautiful way in which both parties can really <laughs> find such a, a common ground and such healing. And so um, I wanted just to ask you, if, you know, your viewpoint on like the different ways that, you know, embarking on this journey can affect, you know, both someone later in their life and someone who's just trying to discover who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, it's interesting because I find we have people who are later in life <laughs> coming through the door that are just starting their spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't see age as a factor. Um, right. A lot of young people um, are more enlightened these days in a different way than when I was growing up. You know, we were enlightened as well. We just did it a little differently. We didn't have social media. Um, didn't exist <laughs> back <Right>. in the day. <laughs> you know, I don't know how we, how we survived, but it didn't. <laughs> but um, I think that if you find a teacher that resonates with you, then go there. If you find a tribe, like here, what's really interesting about Dancing Lion Studio is our classes have all ages here. Yeah. Um, that's very unique. And um, I think, you know, even my daughter's classes, she'll have a lot of her, her younger friends, but then some older folks. Same with me. I've got younger people in my class and older yeah, folks. It's yeah. whoever resonates with you mm -hmm. can be your spiritual leader, guru, however. I don't look at myself that way, but, you know, wow. find someone that resonates with you. And, you know, we're all human. Yeah. How I feel same things as I did as when I was 25. Absolutely. You know, I, I have the same, you know, my perspective is a little different because I've lived a life. And you gained wisdom. Kinda, <laughs> I got a little bit of wisdom. <laughs> but then, you know, some things are still new to me. You know, I, especially as a teacher, 
and I tell my teachers training teacher trainees now is it's one thing to do but it's another thing to teach and if you're on the path of teaching you must always have this zest for learning and I learn something new every day from people that are young I learn from you I learn from you know, it doesn't really, I don't see age really as a factor on the spiritual path. I think um, the more you embark on it, the more you realize that we are ageless, which is exactly what I was exactly. trying to say here is that there is no difference and we are forever no. beings that are being formed. You know, there's no, yeah, there's just no start or no end, I would say. You know, I will say that sometimes if I feel like I want to connect to a certain population, I may do like a playlist one day of music that would resonate, you wow. know, yeah. um, <laughs> or um, so I, I, I try to be mindful in that way. Uh -huh. um, but I can't, I think yoga really is something that reaches people across the board. Yeah. And if you're um, I, like, I do a yoga core class and I kill them. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> they wonder oh who is this teacher we're gonna just we're gonna be easy no so you never know but yeah. I think age is just a number yeah. um yeah. find a teacher that resonates with you that feels like has your heart in your mm -hmm. mind um in 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 their care yeah. and um that's all you really need to do and yeah. hang around people with different ages because you'll learn something. Absolutely. <laughs> you can learn young and older. older. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we can also realize that we are um, not really different. We're all just learning and doing our best. <laughs> we're all great. walking each other home. That's, yeah. that's the phrase that I like to say, you know, wherever that is. And, um, yeah. There's always something to learn from somebody. And I, I always say, I like to tr try to learn something new every day. And I do. <laughs> yeah. If you said I do. You definitely will. Um, yeah. And lastly, I wanted to know just tips for anybody who is um, embarking on this journey or, or wanting to commit to um, bringing in more mindfulness in their lives, whether it's physical, sure. yoga, or, you know, mantra through meditation, you know, what are little things that they can do to incorporate mindfulness in their daily lives, especially in a situation like this where we kind of just have to be with ourselves yeah well uh it, my love hate relationship with zoom <laughs> um join a class yeah join a class just and do. zoom zoom is great in a way now because you you're in your safe space at home mm -hmm. um even though we can see you nobody really looks they're all in their same space but yeah. you're you're connected in a way that you're in a class setting you can be guided rather than just watching a video. Um, it's nice to have somebody actually talking to you, and real time. connecting yeah. real time in that way. So I would say take the leap of faith, um, mm -hmm. join a Zoom class. There's so many of them now, and just try, try. Um, yeah. You know, maybe take a friend, uh, have a friend come with you, and and sit in his, you know, set up a little space and give it a try, try different teachers, try different classes. And then as we open up, you know, try going to a studio if that feels comfortable for you. Yeah. Then you begin to learn tools that you can then use on your own. You know, it's hard to really start meditating on your own. People use apps and they listen, but then they get into the mindset of, am I doing this right? Is this <laughs> like right? I did it wrong. <laughs> Right. And as soon as you start thinking that you're not meditating anymore, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you know, um, there's a funny, <laughs> I teach yoga nidra, which um, you're lying down. And, you know, some people think that you have to sit up tall and you have your hands a certain way. And that's the only way to meditate. No, there's lots of ways to meditate. Mm -hmm. You can lie down and meditate. You can do guided meditation, breath work meditation, uh, I'm going to be doing a little workshop on meditation soon where I, I'm going to incorporate um, meditation on foods and um, some really cool stuff. Yeah. This, the bottom line is meditation is just focused attention. Yeah. So 
let's say you're you're into gardening or painting yeah. or playing an instrument <clears throat> or playing tennis that's a meditation because you're in that's auto a meditation pilot. yeah absolutely you're in this zone you're in this single mind in this zone yeah. and a lot of athletes golfers um dancers football players are now practicing meditation and yoga mm -hmm. because it helps them with their craft yeah. it helps them create the brain pathways to be singularly minded to help the breath yeah. to help calm the nervous system helps mm -hmm. anxiety actors use it too mm -hmm. you know those jitters when you get on stage yeah how can you so Absolutely. our practice is universal to help everybody absolutely 100 percent. and if anybody is if they feel a resistance towards it or if they are if it's something that's out of their comfort zone then i would say pushing yourself out of your comfort zone is the only way in which growth can really happen <laughs> so right. it's just taking that leap of faith like you said yeah. yeah people you know do you want you have to make a choice do you want to keep living in fear right or you know this is too much risk you know not too much trip you know, a lot of jumping out of a plane <laughs> a lot of reward yeah and all you gotta do is make that commitment and um you can also work with a teacher i do privates as well so if you're really intimidated even on zoom i've had uh privates you can do like a half hour mini session and I can guide you just with the principles so that when you come into a class setting, you say, all right, I felt this before. This is okay. okay. You know, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So what is next for Dancing Lion then? Oh my gosh. So we're anxiously awaiting. Um, it is Friday <laughs> afternoon on, what date is it? May 15th. <laughs> And so we're waiting to hear um, that they're going to let the gyms and yoga studios open. Yes. Having said that, mm -hmm. uh, I am very mindful. I have been meeting with yoga, the other studio owners around um, actually the whole country. Right. We have protocols. We have a team coming in here and um, sanitizing weekly, daily. We're only going to allow a certain amount of people and we're going to have the Zoom at the same time for those who are not comfortable. So, mm -hmm. you know, being somebody who's mindful of people's mm -hmm. feelings, we're going to navigate those waters right. in a way that everybody feel uncomfortable. So we can maybe start having classes in the studio as soon as next week. Mm -hmm. um, very modified schedule, low right. attendance, right. also with Zoom. But at least, you know, people can start feeling comfortable getting out. And, you know, we, we don't know. There's an unknown. Right. All we, but all we can do is um, manage the way we feel. We cannot control the outside world, but we can control our response to it, how we feel about it, how we go about navigating our day-to-day -day activities, continuing to wash our hands, be safe, that kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. And be around places that you feel are keeping your well-being in right. um, their mind. Right. But so we are going to continue that. We also have a lot of online things still ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, in our teacher training, we're offering some immersions that we're opening to the public. So on, let's say, ja on January, June, June 6th, we're doing a two-hour kundalini immersion with Devi Manet. Oh, I love that. And that, that's going to be open to the public. So if you oh. want to know all about kundalini, it's going to be a two-hour kundalini immersion. Awesome. There's Sarah Evanson going to do a, um, an Ayurveda immersion in July. Mm -hmm. We're offering a Reiki Level 1 with Jess. I'm um, in July. Yeah. <laughs> and so we still are going to offer a lot of things both online and in person as we proceed right. down this path. Yeah. And um, I hope to see all of you soon in the studio. You know, Absolutely. we do have, um, if you follow us on Instagram, which is Dancing Lion Studio, and on Facebook, Dancing Lion Studio, and Dancing Lion Studio Live, we have our live group page. Yeah. So we're offering free stuff. We have free vinyasa classes, meditations, and stay there forever. Awesome. And so we do offer a lot of free. We do a lot of community service, giving back. 
Right. Um, we support our community big time. Yeah. And uh, gosh, I think I said everything I needed to say. <laughs> I feel like I you guys did so much. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. But above all else, I want to thank you for being just so boldly stepping into your purpose um, and providing a space that is so safe. I mean, you don't know what it is, what you provide for us really to, like, it's my happy place every time I go there and I've been able to meet incredible people, people that I've, I've shared class and, and maths with, but also people like just the teachers. I mean, Jess, Debbie, oh. the list goes on of people who are just divinely inspiring. And I'm so excited oh, yeah. for us to step back into normality. But until then, these you've also, because okay. mind you, you know, this time that we're going through is something that I think is going to be engraved in our minds. <laughs> and I'm content with knowing that like you and Jess and all of the classes that I've taken with you guys are going to be a part of my memory of how I stayed sane oh, because you. you know turning on my computer <laughs> and, it, and you know doing it with my mom the Kundalini classes yeah. and Reiki, it really it kept us afloat and to anybody who wants to embark on it Dancing Lying is the perfect <laughs> to take that place. well the, the, the final thoughts that I'll leave you with is to always come from a place of gratitude. Yeah. Because when you acknowledge what you have, mm. it's so much more than what you don't. Absolutely. So much more than what you don't. And I am so humbled mm. and grateful for the people who have shown up at my door and also the teachers that work with me. I couldn't they, they, they are the lights of my life and it really supported me. I mean, this is, I'm not going to lie. It's not easy for me either. I had to shift my whole business in, in days <laughs> and not know. And, um, you know, we, we are all human. And, uh, but, but the bottom line is that when we come from a place of gratitude, I'm grateful for everybody that has supported us and the teachers um it, it's it's been very overwhelming to me really overwhelming to me and uh you know i plan on continuing to give back um for as long as i can absolutely and that's how you're <laughs> <laughs> so what site that they, people can find their schedule on and everything so um dancing com is our website um, I try to update that. If you go on there, we really appreciate if you subscribe to our newsletter because right now the schedule changes pretty quickly every week. So right. send out a weekly newsletter on Sundays and that will give you the best information uh -huh. as opposed to, and I write stuff in it. <laughs> and, um, and then also Instagram, we do daily um, uh, schedules who's teaching um you know inspiring words and and stuff yeah. like that so that's at dancing line studio as well yes. and also my personal instagram uh fern l con f-e-r-n-l-c-o-n-n -N. yes um but yeah reach out to me and i also want to say um and i've expressed this before our zoom classes are ten dollars Mm -hmm. And it's really, I, I did that mostly to support the teachers at this time. Right. But I, I, as I've always said that if you are out of work or just really need to practice and just can't pay to email me, email me, um, no judgment, no questions asked. I've had people do it. You know, I really want to take that class. I'm struggling right now it would it would mean the world to me to just reach out and do that so um you know, the, you know <laughs> that is out there yeah absolutely. anyone who needs it so that's one less block to um you know taking a class and i mean that from the bottom of my heart yeah. um you know dancing running studio at gmail.com hey fern i really want to take your class is it okay no questions. Link will be sent to you. <laughs> so, yeah. um, 
yeah we need each other right now we need that and you're mm-hmm. doing karma for sure so thank you thank you thank you thank you for the platform for the safe space and i'm so excited for more and more people to find you and to anyone watching thank you for tuning in i hope that you yes. um are open to committing to yourself and uh embarking on this journey that is so beautiful and so formidable and all of those things um, and don't forget to, of course, visit wellworld.tv as well as our Facebook page to watch more interviews like this. Because like I said, we're going live every Sunday. And you can visit lollilaloo.tv for more conscious content from myself as well as subscribing to my newsletter. And yeah, hope everybody <laughs> and grateful. <laughs> uh, yes, we end in gratitude. I'm grateful for you. You are a shining star. Thank you. <laughs>